You may have noticed when it comes to government and politics, things are a little crazy right now. I think it's hard to read the news these days about the injustices that go on and not feel sad and frustrated. When you become aware of the flaws in the machine that's our society, even if you want to help, you want to make a difference, where do you even start? Everyone whines that your likes, comments, thoughts, and prayers don't make a difference. Some can even argue that your vote doesn't make a difference. So beyond that, what do you even have the power to do? Well, let's take a look. Hi, you're watching Gabby on Government. I'm Gabby and I'm an ordinary Canadian on a journey to learn about my government. I'm so happy you're with me on today's journey where I'll be talking about five concrete ways you can engage in Canadian politics. Democracies are far from perfect, but if you don't live in a democracy, your freedom, that thing that arguably makes life worth living, can be severely limited if you're not part of the elite. We often take it for granted, but people around the world risk their livelihoods and lives for the chance to live in a democracy. But even within a democracy, there are huge differences in how democracy is conducted. For example, Denmark is considered a social democracy where there are robust public safety nets. The US has a more capitalist democracy, which takes a much more every man for themselves approach. And of course, there are more granular differences like how we regulate firearms or if we provide childcare. The point being that within a democracy, the form that democracy takes is highly influenced by its population and resulting representatives. And not all democracies are created equal. There are high functioning democracies and there are democracies that don't work very well. A high functioning democracy relies on everyday citizens understanding how the machine that is their government works and thereby understanding the levers that need to be pulled to change it. I personally believe that so many of the problems we face as a society is a direct result of people not understanding how their government works and not understanding how to advocate for constructive change. I'm still very much in the process of learning myself. If understanding the mechanics of democracy sounds like a lot of work to figure out, it is. It's supposed to be something we're taught in civics class, but let's face it, half a semester of civics is hardly enough to even scratch the surface of learning about the fabric of our society. It's easy to just live your life and leave it up to others to call the shots, but the truth is that your needs matter and deserve to be heard, and these other people you're relying on likely don't know, or in the worst case, don't care what your needs are. Who even are these others? The others are supposed to be all of us. We live in a hard-won democracy, not an oligarchy or a monarchy. The point is that everyday people decide on what they need and advocate for it. The fact that you're watching this video tells me that you're either my mom or you're feeling anxious about, you know, not doing something. And the best way to relieve that anxiety is by taking action. So if you want to know how, here are five steps to get involved that I recommend. Step one, follow your representatives on social media. I know, I know this seems too easy, but let me explain. Figure out who your MP, MPP, mayor and or councillor is. Then just as part of your day scrolling through Insta, you'll start to see what they're up to. Are they posting about things you care about? If there have been safety or health issues in your neighborhood, have they taken action? Remember, you're worthy of representation. Regardless of their party, if the politician representing you doesn't care about what you care about, this should put your little civic antenna up. Just start getting a feel for who the people are that are supposed to be your advocate. Bonus points for subscribing to their emails, and extra bonus points for interacting with them by email or even commenting on their social media. Are you frustrated with what you see in the news? Instead of venting to your friends and family, vent to your representatives. A lot of people lament that Facebook likes don't do anything, but they're seriously better than nothing when your likes are in the right place. Do you pay attention to social media likes and comments on your posts? Well, so do politicians. Step two, start to understand the mechanics of government. 
Without understanding how the government works, it's really difficult to know where to direct your efforts or even constructively discuss change with your friends and family. If you understand the government, fights are much less likely to break out at the proverbial Thanksgiving dinner. Watching Gabby on government is a great start, like and subscribe, and I'm doing my best to make sure you know the basics. I'm doing what I can for the audiovisual learners out there, but if you like to read, the two books I started reading to give me the civics basics are The Canadian Regime and Teardown, Rebuilding Democracy from the Ground Up. I really like these books as a set because they're very different styles. The Canadian Regime is almost like a textbook. It's very factual and does a good job explaining why things are the way that they are. In contrast, Teardown is a very easy, colourful read, and the author gives his perspective as an experienced community organiser on some of the key issues with the government, and importantly, how everyday citizens can address them. He seems to be personally left-leaning, but I found his message to be very non-partisan. Does reading books take time? Yes. Are they totally boring? Probably less than you think. The result of reading these books will be richer and more productive conversations and a greater sense of purpose if and when you do take action. Step 3. Pay attention to current events, but not in the usual way. Most people stay up to date with current events by watching or reading the news, but there are so many ways the news can be distorted and biased, from blending news and opinion, to corporate ownership of news organizations, to clickbait titles. It's too much to go into in this video, but there are lots of resources that can help you untangle bias in Canadian media. I think a good rule of thumb is regardless of your political leanings, read both right and left sources of media. If you're a diehard liberal, it may pain you to scan the pages of the sun, but in order to be able to refute conservative claims, it is so important to make an honest attempt to understand their viewpoints, even if you don't agree with them. One program I really recommend is The Agenda with Steve Pakin. It's a bit Ontario-centric, but it covers all sorts of Canada-wide issues and always has guests with different perspectives, and the conversations are almost always productive and balanced. The best part is it's available for free on YouTube. The fourth and fifth step to getting engaged is where the fun starts. This involves actually taking action by volunteering in your community. But where to start? We can largely split up taking action in our communities in two categories, downstream action and upstream action. The idea comes from a story. You're sitting by a river and you see a child float by. You jump into the river and pull the kid out. Then you see another child is coming and you do the same thing, and then another. At some point you have to send someone upstream to see what the source of the problem is. So downstream action deals with the fallout of systematic issues, pulling the kids out of the river, and upstream action tries to address the source of the issue, why they're in the river in the first place. For example, a food bank tackles the effects of poverty, lack of money to buy food, but a not-for-profit like Canada Without Poverty tries to eradicate poverty altogether. Step four, downstream action. Downstream action is all around us. Food banks, park cleanup teams, after school programs, shelters. Organizations that deal with downstream issues are always looking for volunteers, and most cities have some sort of database where you can search for volunteer opportunities. If you follow your local councillor and mayor on social media, they'll likely post ways to participate too. There are two main benefits of getting involved with downstream causes. First is the direct positive effect volunteering has on your community and your own sense of well-being. Second is a bit deeper. In our day-to-day -day lives, we typically interact with a very small slice of our communities. Volunteering allows us to connect with people outside of our inner circle and expands our understanding of the needs of our communities. It can be really difficult to make time for volunteering, but there are a lot of creative organizations that make volunteering flexible and easy to start. If you live in a city, search caremongering and your community's name in Google, and you'll likely find a Facebook page of people coordinating little ways you can get involved, delivering groceries to an elderly couple or donating clothes to a specific person in need. Step five, upstream action. 
Like I said before, upstream action works to address the core issues of the problems we see around us. This work can be much more frustrating because it's so often slow and underfunded. It can be difficult to figure out how to get involved with these organizations, but the best way to do it is to pick a cause you care about, Google it, find an organization that's fixing it, and email the organizers to see how you can get involved. If you want to get involved in some sort of upstream cause but don't know what, I have a few recommendations. I think the most straightforward way to get involved in an upstream cause is by getting involved in a riding association. Every Canadian lives in a political riding, and each riding has a riding association for each political party. It's like a little party club. Even if you don't align perfectly with a party, it's an amazing way to get acquainted with the mechanics of government and have more influence in government. I've been involved in a riding association in my own community since the last election, and I've learned so much about the Canadian government and how policy is made. The members are active citizens that keep me up to date about the issues in my community. If you're watching this video because you were inspired to take action by the recent anti-racism protests, I've linked below to a list of Canadian organizations working to achieve racial equality. An organization I personally support that I believe gets to the root of many problems in our government is Fair Vote Canada. Our government uses a very old school style of voting called first past the post that silences a lot of marginalized voices during elections. Fair Vote Canada works to change our voting system so Canadians are more fairly represented and they are always recruiting for volunteers. There are so many more ways to take an active role in shaping the world around you, but I think these five ways are a great launching point to discover all the ways you can make positive, constructive change. I would love to hear the ways you get involved in civic life in the comments. I'll put together a list of the best ones in a pinned comment below. So what do you think? Are you inspired to get involved in civic life? Have you been involved in the past and been let down? Are you involved in an organization right now that you're excited about? Are you still lost and don't know where to start? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm not a civics expert and I'm doing my best to figure all this out myself, so if I got something wrong or you want to add something, let me know in the comments. I think civics is super important, so if you want to help other people to find my content, I would be so grateful if you would like this video, share it, and subscribe. Thanks again and see you next time.